We're here in Big Cottonwood Canyon. It's got some historic and geo geologic signs here. Blind miner of the Wasatch, James Leroy Roy Newman. Roy Newman was blinded and nearly killed when a stick of dynamite misfired in this mine in 1929. But the, the, but the determined miner recovered and returned to work. Returned to work his mine for another 45 years. You can see the mine portal to the right of the sign across the creek at the head of the mine dump. The belief that rich lead, zinc, and silver ore lay deep in the mountain kept Roy working. He did encounter low-grade veins of ore. He drove 1,600 feet using only handheld drills, a four-pound hammer, explosives, and his ingenuity. Though blind, Roy could faintly detect light in the corner of one eye as he used the ability to keep the mine working straight. Roy would set a carbide lamp in the middle of the track, several hundred feet from the mine's working face. Then he would stand a pick with its handle up in the track a few feet from the face. Standing between the pick and the face, Roy moved his head back and forth until the pick handle blocked the light. Repeating this process, he was able to continually center and straighten his workings. Roy lived alone in the cabin near the mine through the pleasant summers and long, harsh winters. With the help of friends and family who kept him supplied with food and other basic needs, he maintained his optimism and preserved, I like, a, I like the challenge mother, mother Nature presents, the miner who searches for her secrets, he said. Big Cottonwood Mining District. Big Cottonwood Canyon has played a major role in the mining, timber, and recreation history of Utah. Lumber was used to build mine facilities and to build fuel, build and fuel the settlement of Salt Lake Valley. In the 1850s, steam-powered sawmills peppered canyon tributaries named Mill, A, B, D, E, and F. Completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869 provided for the transport and sale of silver, gold, lead, zinc, and copper. Mining towns like Gold City, Silver Springs, and Argenta flourished during boom times. In 1872, 500 people lived in Big Cottonwood Canyon. The nearby ghost town of Argenta, Latin for silver, had one good hotel and the only post office in the canyon. Colorful names also grace most of the major mines. Regulator Johnson, Mutual, Maxfield, Prince of Wales, Cardiff, Copper King, Dolly Varden, and Clementine. At the Reed and Benson mine in Cardiff Fork, workers lowered themselves into the mine entrance on the steep limestone cliff face. A 1,580-foot-long tramway connected the mine tunnel to the wagon road in the gold. Mining productions in Big Cottonwood peaked between 1871 and 1927. The last great venture was in 1955. Large-scale mining has ceased in the canyon, giving way to recreation. The hundreds of decaying old mines that remain in the Big Cottonwood District are death traps for hikers and explorers. Many of these abandoned mines have been closed by the state's abandoned mine reclamation program. 
If you come upon an old mine, remember they are dangerous and keep out. Clues frozen in stone. Our mountains and the rocks within them touch all aspects of our lives. Mountains supply recreation, scenery, wildlife, habitats, and water. Rocks provide building materials, mineral wealth, and reflections of the Earth's past. Like detectives, geologists study rock formations for clues that help them understand ancient climates and landscapes and unearthed hidden riches. The rocks at this site were deposited on a continental shelf between 360 and 330 million years ago. Pieces of coral reef, fish skeletons, and fine-grained debris settled out in the shallow, warm waters and rested on the ocean floor. Over time, a thick blanket of debris covered the bottom of the ocean. Eventually, heat and pressure of burial compacted and hardened the sediment to rocks. Millions of years later, forces within the earth caused the buried rocks to bend and break. Between 20 and 15 million years ago, movement on the Wasatch Fall uplifted the Wasatch Range. As the immense block of earth rose, wind, rain, gravity, and glaciers exposed rocks and carved the deep canyons that we see today.